Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Hunty's World of Pain on tour. Right, so these are games where I play with extreme accuracy for me and uh, make my opponent cry. So uh, if you've got a, a warm drink, sit back and relax. You might even have a cold drink, depends where you are in the world. Alrighty, so we have the black pieces. It's a five minute blitz game. And we have e4, we have e5, we have knight uh, f3, knight c6, all very normal so far, and out comes the bishop, the Italian. It's really weird that loads of people play the, like, play the Italian below 1400, above 1400, you get a lot more Spanish in there. There's a hint there. Okay, so what do we play against this? Well, we're Vienna Gambit players. So it's the Freddy Krueger repertoire, we play pawn to f5, he takes, we advance the pawn. This is very important. This comes with tempo. They shouldn't take the pawn. Because now the knight has nowhere to go. Can't go here or here because of our knight. You've heard me say this a lot, lot of times before. Can't go there or there because of the queen. So he's got two options. He can retreat the knight or play queen e2, which is, if, if anything, slightly worse. He retreats the knight. We play knight 2, f6, defending this square. We don't go after the bishop. This is playable. This is instantly playable. But then after the queen comes in, you have to move the king, and it's not very nice. This is much easier to play. Okay, d3, very, very common move. I see this a lot. We play pawn to d5. We have a slight edge at this point. Again, this move comes with tempo. And also, because we've vacated this square, the bishop's allowed to come out and recapture the pawn that we lost in the first place. And there we go. Now look, check this out. Just like the Vienna Gambit. So often, we have a better center. We have three pieces developed. Two whites, one. What's more, this bishop is not very happy over there on that side of the board. We have a pin. I break the pin with my bishop. We have takes, takes. And now, hello, we are eyeing up a nice little uh, packet down in the queen side corner. Okay, queen comes out with a check. Very bad idea. Back comes the bishop to g6. Another tempo winning move. Tempo, tempo, tempo is the theme. Uh-oh, okay, well, you, you grab a pawn. You grab a pawn, okay, but then bang. We trade bishops off, we grab the rook, we're up some material. Okay, our bishop's now trapped in the corner though. Okay, so we could have maybe launched a, a rescue campaign here. But I decided to castle, let's activate the rooks. I'm, I'm plus four right now. And what's more, my opponent has all of his pieces, his remaining pieces are still in their starting positions. Out comes the knight. I play rook h to e8. Grab myself another pawn, why not? And now this is this is a good move. It's a double attack, right? He's moved the knight, attacking the rook. Also a discovery on the bishop. So the bishop's going to fall. I just drop back to the seventh rank. And now we double up against the knight. Knight moves out of the way. And here I can simply drop the rook onto the back rank, right? But pause if you want and figure out exactly what's going to happen here. Okay, in comes the rook. Does he have to trade rooks? Well, actually, no, he doesn't, because he can block the check. Notice that this knight actually defends this rook, but how is this going to work out for our opponent? Well, it's not ideal, because we take the rook, the knight takes, and now rook d1, we're attacking both knights at once. He can't save them both. Well, he can. There he goes. He <laughs> saves, <them. laughs> saves them both. But now my knight's going to come in and pressure this pinned knight. So... The king is now going to have to come and add a second defender to the knight. I come in anyway, attacking the pin knight. Maybe not the best move. It's saying actually lift the rook to d2. It was slightly better there. But anyway, in comes the knight. And here I was actually thinking he was going to do this. At which point... Yeah, I think that would have been the better move. If king e2... I actually have to swing my knight back to defend the rook. But he doesn't do it. He pushes a pawn. I simplify off. And now the rook is here. Okay. The king can come out, but the knight can't move legally. Right. So what's he going to do? He comes out with the king. I snatch the pawn. And I'm coming after this pawn now. I figure I can handle things there on the king side of the board. Um, even though I'm, out, I'm outnumbered, I've got three pawns and... A king and a knight against two pawns, but look at this. Runaway pawns here. Okay, we have push, h6, check, 
and now off goes Andy on his journeys, right? Now at this point, what do we do? Okay, I decide I can simply trade down. Maybe not the best move, um, but I figure that now I have an overwhelming advantage. My king can now merrily make his way over to this side of the board. Why? Because these pawns are in a chain. So if this king is going to capture any of these pawns, he has to start with the guy at the back, right? But if he moves here, off goes Andy, right? Andy is unstoppable. So this king cannot move forwards of Andy, right? He's got to stay behind or adjacent to my A pawn. So he comes in with his pawns. Uh, I now I know play c5, and I can, I can do this. Well, you go, well, you can take your pawn. But then he's moved forwards from Andy, and An Andy promotes to a queen. So he has to come back. My king comes across. His king comes back. Now here, I think I can also play b4, uh, is, which is fine. Computer says h5, king e6, all good moves. This is still totally winning. Right, but now we have a, an interesting situation, because... Fun, fun, fun in the end game. Okay, now it's completely winning for black. Spoiler alert. However, I cannot move forward of this pawn either. I have to stay this side, right, of this pawn, because otherwise I can't catch him. So that's as far forward as I can go. So the question is, what can we do with our pawns? So I burn a move here with my king. I just put all my pawns side by side, it means this king cannot step forwards in any way, right? All of these squares are out of bounds. King comes across. I push once with check. Again, he can't come onto any of these squares. So off he goes there. And now it's actually a forced mate in 10. I burn another move with my king. He comes back. I push a pawn. Now it's mate in 7. King goes to the side. I push another pawn up. Mate in 6. King comes to b1. I burn another move. <coughs> Maybe I didn't need to do that. It's saying a2 check is actually the best move here. a2 check. Um, but I've got to be careful about stalemate, right? If this pawn is blocked from moving and this king can't legally move, that could be a stalemate. So we've got to be careful. So now, pawn to b2. King is pretty much forced to this square. I mean, if the king had come here... I've got an unstoppable pawn, right? So he has to go here. And now what do we do? Well, now simply, I burn another move and I block the pawn by putting my king back on f7. Why? Well, look at this king, right? Oh, he can't go to the side because he's being checked by the pawn. So this king is going to be forced to one of these two squares. And when he does, the other pawn advances and the pawn... We've now got two pawns side by side. King can't capture either of them. We're going to get ourselves a queen. Okay. And there we go. We get two queens. And now it's bang, 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 boom, boom. All pre moves. And there you go. Lovely win. Let's have a quick look at the game report. 90% for yours truly. 76.9. And this guy's a high 1300s. Okay. I made 35 best moves. Two misses. Two misses. Two misses, nevertheless. And in terms of, guess, the ELO, 1,500 for white. He did not play a bad game. He played it above his rating. 1,950 for me. And that's what we call a world of pain. So, hope you enjoyed that. While well, you enjoy your, your quick coffee or your swift beer. Thanks for watching. See you soon.